correct and we have also seen uh, uh, long column and short column what is the meaning of long column and meaning of the short column correct if the effective length to the least lateral dimension is greater than 12 then we will call it as long column and if the effective length the ratio of effective length to the least lateral dimension least lateral dimension means either it may be width of the column or depth of the column whatever it may be whichever the least okay if that ratio okay effective length to the least lateral dimension is less than or equal to 2 then it is called as short column okay Now, uh, in the next session, in the next topic, uh, we have uh, Euler's column theory. Euler's column theory means here uh, the Euler, he is a Swiss uh, mathematician. Uh, he has given uh, the basic principle to uh, arrive at uh, the critical uh, load which is carried by the column. For example, if a column is loaded, with some different end condition. OK. OK, if a column is acted upon by the load. He has given the principle or the procedure to derive the equation for this critical load PCR or crippling load. OK, so based on the similar principle, we will derive the equation for this crippling load or critical load or the maximum uh, compressive load of the column. Okay, and this uh, crippling load, no, it depends on the end condition of the column. It depends on the end condition of the column. If you take strut, okay, strut, it may be either pin jointed or fixed jointed, correct? So depending upon the end condition of the column and depending upon the load acting on the column, uh, we will get the different expressions for are different equations for this crippling load. OK. Now to derive the equations for crippling load, crippling load means the maximum load that the column can carry. OK, maximum load that that the column can carry is called as crippling load. OK, beyond that load, the column will undergo failure. Okay. It is a maximum load in which the column carries. OK, it's called as crippling load or it is also called as buckling load. OK. Now uh, to derive the equation for those crippling load for different uh, types of columns with different uh, end conditions, uh, certain assumptions have been made. OK, those assumptions uh, here listed. The material of the column is homogeneous, isotropic and the elastic. OK. And it is also assumed as cross section of the column is uniform throughout. OK, the cross section is assumed as uniform throughout the length of the column. OK, next is. The column is initially straight and loaded axially. OK, axially means along the axis of the column, the load is applied. OK, the column is assumed as straight and it is loaded axially. It is loaded axially. Loaded axially means along the central axis of the column, the force is been applied. That is the meaning. The self weight of the column is negligible. Okay. The self weight is, is also the one of the load that will act on the member. Any if you take any member, column, beam, slab, whatever. That self weight is neglected here. Okay. The self weight is neglected means it is assumed as very negligible. Okay. And the next assumption made is the column fails by buckling alone. Means the column, it is assumed that the column will fail by buckling alone like this. By undergoing buckling, the column will fail. That is a, a one of the assumption made in Euler's theory. Okay. Next, the direct stress is very small as compared to the bending stress. See, when you take the stresses in the column, there are two main kinds of stresses. OK, for example, if I take a column, OK, if I apply load P, other than that, that load is applied at an eccentricity of E from the center of the column. 
Okay. So if you take uh, this case, there are two main kinds of stresses. One is direct stress, direct stress, and one more is bending stress. Bending stress. Okay. Direct stress means the stress which is measured with respect to the magnitude of the load and the cross sectional area of the column. Okay. If A is the cross sectional area of the column, directly P by A will directly give the direct stress. Okay. And bending stress due to this applied load, the column will, will bend also. Correct. The column will undergo bending also. So, whatever the stress is developed at uh, uh, exterior fibers of the column, those stresses are called as bending stresses. The stresses developed due to bending of the column, they are called as bending stress. So, in the Euler theory, the assumption made is the direct stress, whatever the direct stress P by A, it is assumed to be very negligible compared to the bending stress. Okay, that is also. Uh, one of the assumption in the Euler theory, direct stresses are very small compared to the bending stress. Okay. Then the last assumption made is the length of the column is very large as compared to its lateral dimension, the length. Okay. The length of the column is very large when it is compared to the lateral dimensions. Lateral means B and D. Okay. Length is very large when compared to the width or depth of the column. That is also one of the assumption. Okay. So keeping in view of all these assumptions, so the equations have been derived with different columns with different end conditions. Columns with different end conditions. Basically, there are four different end conditions considered here. Okay. First one is both ends of the column are hinged. Okay, both the ends of the column are hinged. So here I have listed, you can go through. That, that is the first condition. Both the ends of the column is assumed as hinged condition. Okay, the second assumption is one end of the column is fixed and the other end is free. The third case is both the ends of the column are fixed. Okay. One end is fixed and the other end is pinned. Okay, if I write the diagram, what is the first first case? Both the ends of the column are hinged. Okay, both the ends of the column are hinged like this. Both the ends of the column are hinged. Okay, so like this, the bending of the column will take place due to the creep, uh, the load axial load. Uh, second condition is what? One end of the column is fixed and other end is free. One end of the column is fixed and other end is free. Other end is free. And due to, uh, due to the applied load, the column will bend like this at this condition. Okay. Here you can see one end is fixed. Here the other end is free. This is the second case. And the third case is both ends of the columns are fixed. Both the ends of the columns are rigidly fixed. This is the third case. Both the ends of the columns are rigidly fixed. And the last condition, one end is fixed and the other end is pinned or hinged. One end of the column is fixed and the other end is pinned. Okay, this is the fourth case. Okay, with respect to all these end conditions, we will derive the equation for crippling load or the buckling load by using Euler's column theory. By using Euler's column theory. Okay. Is that clear for you all? Now, let us see the sign conventions used for the column. Sign conventions used for the column. Okay. So here, I have written uh, two uh, different diagrams. You can just go through both the diagrams. Okay. So in the first diagram, you can see in the first diagram, the column is tending to bend the column with its 
convexity towards initial central line. Okay. So here you can see this line and the left both both the lines. Okay, left and right lines. The column is tending to bend. Okay, with its convexity towards the center of the column or towards the axis of the column. Then, in that case, we will consider the sign as positive. Okay, if the column tries to bend in such a way that it is convexity towards the axis or center line of the column, then it is taken as positive. If the column is concave towards the center line of the column, if it, it, it bends like a concave uh, shape, then it is considered as negative sign. Okay, and the column will tend to bend the column with its concavity towards the initial center line, towards the initial center line, then it is taken as negative. This is the sign convention. This you need to remember. Okay. So now let us see uh, the derivations for all these conditions. Okay. When both the ends of the column are hinged, okay, hinged and uh, one end fixed and another end is free, then when, when the both the ends of the column are fixed and one end is fixed and another end is free uh, pinned, then what will be the expression for the what will be the equation for the crippling load that we will derive using this Euler's column theory. Okay.